Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. After Karen threatens to get me fired for delivering her paper a little late, I report her behavior to my boss, and she is sent to the principal's office, losing custody of her children. The second story. A stingy restaurant owner's plan to get teenagers to work for him for free backfired horribly, and the restaurant eventually closed down. The third story. Lost job. Opened own company. Found success in unexpected way. The first story is... I get Karen sent to the principal's office in this time. She doesn't get the kids. During my last few years of high school, I delivered newspapers every morning. The money wasn't great, but it was my first job. I really enjoyed the peace and quiet that comes with being awake before the sun rises. It was an enjoyable experience, however there were downsides. For example we had to go around once a month to collect payments, which was a real pain. If you can't get a customer to answer the door, they can't pay you. If a customer decided to simply stop paying you, there was nothing that you could do about it. The subscription could only be cancelled by the customer themselves so if someone decided not to pay you, the money was taken out of your earnings, and the delivery person was the one stuck with the bill. Unfortunately, this was extremely common. This would eventually become the reason I quit, since I could not afford to work two hours a day and not get paid for it. One morning as I arrived home from finishing my routine, my mother was extremely agitated. My boss had called and woke her up 15 minutes earlier because he had started receiving calls from the paper, saying that several customers on a route connected to mine had called to say they had not received their paper, and that this had happened several times this week, so he had to fire the person on that route. He wanted to know if I could take over the route. The route was only about half the size of the route I was currently doing, and I would only add about 30 minutes a day to my trip, so I agreed to take it. The first week passes pretty uneventfully. One morning during the second week of doing my new route, a few stops before I finish the route, as I'm heading back over to my bike after hitting a string of houses, I can hear a woman's voice calling out, excuse me, hey you, excuse me. I turn around to see a woman. She's coming down the driveway in a t-shirt and underwear holding a newspaper in one hand and using her free hand to try to pull the bottom of her t-shirt lower to preserve some sense of modesty. I recognize her of the substitute teachers at my high school. Excuse me, what the F is this? She says holding up the newspaper. I stood there confused for a moment before replying. I'm sorry, Miss Karen, but I don't understand. She cuts me off. I thought I already told you. If you guys are going to fire my daughter for being a little late one day, then I do not want your effing paper. Still a little confused. I'm sorry, Miss Karen but I've only had this route for a few days, and I'm certain that I'm not the person you spoke with. Maybe you spoke with Mr. Boss? Well, if you're not the person I spoke with, then how do you know my name? She said, wearing her smuggest I've got you now face. I'm one of your students. I've been going to the high school you teach at for four years. If you want to cancel your subscription, you have to call the number. I can't cancel it for you. This obviously was not what she wanted to hear. She got really calm for a second and looked me in the eyes and said, you think you're really effing smart, don't you? before throwing the paper at me and turning around to waddle back up the driveway. I called my boss when I got home to tell him what happened, and that she wanted her subscription cancelled. He told me that when he had called to fire her daughter, Karen picked up the phone and screamed the same thing at him, and that he had also told her that she needed to call the subscription line if she wanted her service cancelled, and that the teenage paperboy could not cancel the subscription for her. He also said that when Karen's daughter accepted the job, her mom told her that she would be away every second weekend at her father's, and would not be able to deliver the Saturday and Sunday papers, and that her mom would deliver them. The next Saturday I received an updated subscription list, and checked if her address was still on it. It was, meaning that she still hadn't called the line to cancel, so I had no choice, but to keep delivering the paper. This continued for a few more months until I was finally able to convince my boss to cancel her paper due to non-payment. One morning on a weekday I accidentally slept in until about 4.30am, which meant I had to rush to get them all delivered before 6.30 which is the cutoff time before a paper can be considered late. I deliver Karen's paper around 6.15, which once again is near the end of my route. This time Karen comes running out, wearing pants this time, and starts yelling at me about how the paper is late, and that she's going to call the paper and get me fired, just like they did to her daughter for being a little late one time. I tried to explain that her paper, while arriving a little later than I normally deliver it, is still not past the cutoff time and that the paper is only guaranteed to be in her mailbox before 6.30. And she, of course, in typical Karen fashion, was having none of it. You can't talk your way out of this one. You're gonna be so effing fired. 
and she runs back into the house laughing to herself. About two hours later, I'm sitting in class waiting for first period to start, and who should walk in to teach the class that day but Miss Karen? She has barely taken two steps into the class when she spots me and begins shaking her finger in my direction. Nuh-uh. No, 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 no. Not you. You go to the office now. My entire class is baffled for two reasons. The first reason being that I was a pretty good kid and didn't get in trouble often. And the second reason being that it happened so quickly after her walking into the room that I couldn't have even had the time to misbehave in any way, shape, or form. I arrive at the principal's office and check in with the secretary. She asks why I was in the office and not in class. Look, Miss Nice Secretary, I know every kid who gets sent to the office probably says this, but I honestly didn't do anything wrong. I then explain what happened between myself and Karen earlier concerning the paper route and that this was about something that happened outside of school, during non-school hours. She looks at me slightly confused, and then she nods at another girl sitting in the waiting room and asks if I know who she is. I didn't. I had never seen her before. She was a pretty girl, maybe two years younger than me, with short bleach blonde hair, wearing a band tee with the sleeves cut off, and what had to be at least 10 bracelets on each wrist. I can't remember the band, but it was probably some 90s punk band. The fact that she had been crying was obvious. Her eye makeup had been running and her face was red. I was sent to sit with her in the waiting area. She was sat on the furthest right, with two seats to her left. I followed urinal etiquette and took the seat on the left. As we sat there waiting to speak to the principal, she would periodically play with her bracelet and rings, which is how I caught a glimpse of the fresh purple bruise around her wrist. The principal's door opens and the secretary whispers something to him, which causes him to glance at me. Mr. Greg, could you come in here please? Now a pretty girl's eyes light up with recognition as if she knows who I am, and it's at this point my foolish teenage self realizes there's something bigger going on than me being kicked out of physics before the class even starts. The principal asks me what happened, and I explained to the best of my ability what had happened that morning. He thanked me and asked me to have a seat again. When I came out, the girl was gone. The principal asked the secretary if there was another teacher available with a free period. She said, yes, Miss Math Teacher is free right now. Should I page her? Yes, please. The math teacher escorts me back to class and tells Miss Karen that she needs to go to the principal's office. We spend the rest of the class with a free period. I never say Miss Karen again, and as far as I knew, that was the end of the story. Until, a few years later, Pretty Girl ended up dating one of my friends and I finally got to hear the rest of the story. Pretty Girl was Karen's daughter and her parents were getting a divorce. Karen was a drunk. Apparently, she had been the one to get her daughter the paper route because she thought having that job would mean her daughter would have to be at her house every night and never be at her father's. Pretty Girl had tried the paper route and living with her mom for a while, but being the mean drunk that she was, SH deteriorated pretty quickly and Pretty Girl wanted to go stay with her dad. When she did, there was no one to deliver the papers and that's why she was fired. Not because they were a little late, but because around 50 newspapers had not been delivered several days in a row. Without the paper job, Karen had lost her imagined bargaining chip and was peeved, which is why she decided I was public school enemy number one, even though all I had done was accept more work. She thought getting me fired from a paper route I had been doing without complaint for three years would mean that her daughter would get the job back again. She had called the paper to complain about me, and despite them having probably told her that her paper was not late, she decided to drive over to Pretty Girl's dad's house and give her the good news that she was getting her job back and give her a lift to school. Pretty Girl had told her mom that she did not want the job or the lift, and she was not supposed to come over when her dad was not there. Karen didn't like that and dragged Pretty Girl by her arm to the car. Pretty Girl went straight to the office when classes started and asked him to call her dad. He had picked her up while she was in the principal's office. Apparently what I had told the principal was enough to corroborate Pretty Girl's story, which gave the principal what he needed to speak to the union and have her removed from my school's roster until Pretty Girl had graduated. That morning's event had also been a deciding factor in her dad getting full custody. This time, Karen did not get the kids. The second story is, Stingy owner's plan to get teenagers to work for him for free backfired horribly. A tale from my youth. When I was 19, female, I worked as a bartender for below minimum wage at an SH restaurant where the owner or manager was never present. Don't ask me why I took the job for such A pay. Okay, I thought being a bartender at 19 would give me street cred or something. Huh? <laughs> the idea was that we get paid significantly less, but we could take stock and then just get it subtracted from our already abysmal wages. In my country, we have tipping culture, so the owner reckoned we would make enough money from tips alone. He was wrong, because customers hardly ever came there because this restaurant was A. This restaurant was so horrible. Sanitary standards were not met. We never had enough cutlery. The sun literally was so hot that it melted the plastic on the bar stools because the layout was so stupid and the owner was too stingy to install blinds or AC. 
At one point, we only had three whiskey tumblers left, and when we asked the owner to please buy glasses, he told us to serve the customers their drinks in coffee mugs. Meanwhile, this MF was driving around town in sports cars. At our Christmas end of year staff party, we received our Christmas bonuses to thank us for all our hard work, an entire rotisserie chicken each. I effing kid you not. I wish I was joking. We got tired of this treatment, so we all decided to leave at the same time. But before that, for a few weeks while searching for new jobs, we would just blast Nightcore remixes of Die Antwoord and get all wasted all night. Management and owner were never there, so they had no idea why we weren't making a profit. We simply told them people weren't coming in. We racked up huge debt from the owner by drinking all of his booze, but he never made us sign contracts because he paid us so far below minimum wage which was illegal. So he never reported us for theft because then he would have to admit to authorities that he used us as slaves. We all quit unanimously, and the restaurant closed because of it. When I say quit, what I mean is we just left because technically we never worked there to begin with. How this guy came to be the owner of a restaurant in the first place is beyond me because he had some of the worst business practices I had ever seen. Imagine thinking you can trick a bunch of drunk, delinquent teenagers into working for you for free, and then getting outwitted by them. Ha, <laughs> what a moron. Whatever made him think we would stay? I do not comprehend the logic to this day. And the last story is... Job flies away. Near the deepest part of the last Great Recession, I was working as a national project manager for a billion dollar freight company. I had been with them for 10 years, and had shepherded their growth from a small regional company to a national player. Despite the insane hours and travel schedule, I loved the job and I was good at it. I had been opening up the California market for two years, and had been flying coast to coast every 10 days. It came time for me to take a scheduled vacation. I buttoned down the job and hopped on a plane for Baltimore to catch a connecting flight home. When we landed, I pulled out my phone to check for messages and to catch myself up. No service. I pulled out my laptop to check emails. Couldn't access my account. It subsequently was revealed to me that while I had been in the air, my whole division had been closed down and everyone let go. So no notice or advance warning of any kind. Needless to say, I was shocked and somewhat devastated. But in hindsight, it turned out to be a wonderful thing. I reopened my small construction company that I had shuttered to take the job and started doing the same work as an independent for their main competitor. But I have rarely been as surprised as I was that day. I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.